Oh boy, hi everybody, I'm Becky and I am driving out of Miami right now. Well, let me tell you, I've been wintering in Florida this winter, living in this minivan, this one. And the driving in Miami is um, the worst driving I've encountered. And Florida is very famously full of horrible driving. I think it's a combination of Caribbean drivers and New York City drivers, the olds, and just out of towners. That and the urban vibes of like, you're never going fast enough, you're never getting there quick enough, and wherever you are is a problem, you need to get somewhere else. <laughs> this morning I dropped my friend Rachel off at the airport. Yes, I was hosting her in my van. It's always hard, the transition from hosting and being with friends to being solo again. So I had a plan that I would hit the one state park in Miami that I had not yet been to and ease the transition to solo life. And now I am heading north out of the city to Fort Lauderdale, which is barely not Miami. I am going to go to a different state park this afternoon. Hopefully one that actually has parking because the one I visited Miami, I was doing urban on-street paid parking. So let me show you these state parks I've been to. The first one was called the Barnacle. Literally, it's called the Barnacle. And I got the stamp in my Florida State Parks passport. The Barnacle refers to a historic house in Miami on Biscayne Bay from the late 1800s, an oldest house, permanent house, on its original site in Miami, in Miami-Dade County. It's a cool historic house that survived two major hurricanes, the major hurricane of 1926 before they named hurricanes and Hurricane Andrew of the 90s, which I remember from my childhood. I was like six or seven years old when Hurricane Andrew came through and it killed a lot of people in Miami. But that house from the 1800s is still standing strong. It's a great example of successful Florida architecture. And now I'm heading to a beach state park. I don't know what it's called. I'll put the text here. And I'm just going to go ahead and shut up and pay attention to driving because it's something I need to be fully present for. When I got to the Dr. Von D. Meisel Eula Johnson State Park, I discovered I wouldn't be swimming because not only was there tons of beach erosion, but there was stinging marine life in the water. It feels like every car in this parking lot is a Quebec license plate. And it feels like everybody I see is speaking French. <laughs> Quebecois French. And look at where my van is parked in front of the Konex Dam, the Holland America cruise ship. I'll dry in no time out here. It's really time for me to do laundry. I just used the state park to take a shower. It's been really hot the last couple of days. I was sweating in my sleep last night. Gross. You'd think this lifestyle is pretty stinky, but it's really not. But I've been out long enough now that I think we're starting to get stinky, so. A good shower was good, and up next will be some laundry. But first, some last explorations of the state park before I leave. I ended up closing out the park at 6 p.m. I was watching the cruise ships leave. It was really cool. And I ended up coming to a laundromat to do some laundry. And I had one of those van life moments where this strip mall has the laundromat, but it also has a Wendy's. That will be dinner. And right across the way are some hotels where I'm planning to try and park. So everything I need in one little spot. Thanks for following along for a day in a life. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more.